Hello and welcome back to DXB Today, where we are bringing you everything you need to know about COP28 all week. Now, earlier today, our very own Dua caught up with Laura Turkett from the Policy Advisor and Deputy Chief of Research and Data for UN Women. So let's take a look. Laura, thank you very much indeed for joining us on the show. Now, you're here in COP28. Can you shed some light on the role of UN Women and your role specifically? Sure. Um, so thank you so much for having me. Um, so UN Women is at uh, COP28 this year uh, really to shine a light on the interlinkages between gender inequality and climate change. Um, and my role is, um, well, we're launching a, a new report on feminist climate justice. Uh, so I've just launched that this morning um, and we're also um, uh, working on the negotiations to make sure that we get a good outcome for women and girls. Incredible. Congratulations on launching the report firstly. But can you shed some light on what the link might be between environment and gender? Definitely. So um, we see increasing evidence um, of these linkages and um, because women and girls tend to be poorer than men and boys, they have less access to jobs, to economic resources and so on. When extreme weather hits, it's much more difficult for them to uh, recover and, and rebuild. And so um, we're seeing uh, a lot of different impacts on women and girls. Um, we've seen over the years a lot of progress on uh, issues around uh, child marriage, for example. But in, in, in areas of environmental stress, we're actually seeing an increase in child marriage uh, for the first time because families are under pressure, they're under stress, and so they're having to make very difficult decisions for their daughters. We also see an increase in women's unpaid care work. So that's work to collect firewood, to collect water, uh, to prepare food for their families. Um, so, you know, that work becomes uh, more difficult, uh, you know, when you have droughts and floods and so on. And so women and girls are having to do more of that kind of work as well. Very impactful work indeed. Um, and how important was it for you to launch this report here at COP28 in Dubai? I mean, it's the place to launch it, right? Because governments uh, from around the world are coming to um, discuss this really tricky issue of, of climate change. Um, and we really wanted to make sure that they were putting women and girls at the center of their climate action as they're you know, negotiating all the different aspects of this. Um, so yeah, very important to be here. And we really hope that policymakers will uh, take a gender perspective or think about women and girls as they're negotiating the outcome. Absolutely. And how do you believe that this COP specifically in Dubai has been different to previous COPs in the past? Well, um, UN Women, um, we have an office in, in UAE and we work quite closely with the government and I think the government has put a very strong emphasis on gender equality, which has been really welcome. Um, so we've done a number of events with the UAE, including um, a really important uh, two-day conference on uh, gender and environment data. So really trying to increase the evidence that we have on the linkages between gender and environment and then making sure that policymakers use that evidence. Um, so we partnered with uh, the COP28 uh, presidency on that as, as well as a number of other organisations. Um, and I think uh, the COP presidency has made a lot of space for gender equality issues which has been really good to see. Incredible. And for our viewers at home, if they want to get involved, if they want to educate themselves or um, even help volunteer in any way, how can they get involved with supporting gender equality globally right here from Dubai? Uh, well, I mean, they could visit the UN Women website. Um, there's a whole load of resources on there about different gender equality issues. We cover a whole range, including uh, on violence against women, on climate change, on economic empowerment and so on. So uh, they can visit the website and find out more. Okay, great. Laura, firstly, just want to thank you for your incredible service um, to gender equality and thank you very much for being with us today. Thanks so much. Thank you. That was very insightful, Dua's interview with Laura Turquette, Policy Advisor and Deputy Chief of Research and Data for You and Women. So thank you very much, Apishek, for joining us today on the show. But we have something before you leave. Mm -hmm. right. Ash is going to be testing you with 60, <laughs> DXB in 60. Abhishek, the questions only get tougher on DXB60. Not sure if you like speaking about yourself, but we don't care anyway. We're going to put you on the spotlight, all right? I was not even prepared, <laughs> but I'll give it a go. <laughs> well, let's hope you know yourself, all right? Because we're going to ask you as many questions as possible, and you need to answer them within 60 seconds. Ready? I'll give it all a right, try. All right, your time starts now. Three, two, one, let's go. If you weren't a journalist or a multimedia producer, what kind of work would you be working in? I would be playing some sport. One thing you cannot live without? Uh, traveling your motto in life and work um, just just be happy content with what you do perfect your first job first job was uh, as a newspaper 
You actually, were a newspaper. I was, I was, no, I was actually working for a publisher, uh, running a column there. I wrote a column. That was my first job, yeah. Your hidden gem in Dubai. Uh, hidden gem, there are too many of them. Now you've put me in a spot, but... Um, you know, one of those coffee shops on Mamzar Beach, you always stop by, have a coffee. Yeah, or a Karak. Yeah. If you could choose one superpower, what would it be? Um, listen, I'm a linguist. I speak about 25 languages. When I say I speak, I, break, I can break the ice. I would love to actually master all those 25 languages. 25? Okay, yeah. why Dubai? I think it brings the best of all worlds, ticks all the boxes for me, safety, security, and the weather isn't that bad at all. I couldn't agree with you more. Thank you so much for that, Abhishek. This has been so much fun. Thank you. My pleasure. Yes, thank you so much indeed. You'll be pleased to know that you did pass the test. And oh. yes, we will have you back as a co-host if you want. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> Look forward to it. Thank you very much for having me today. No, yeah. it's thank been you. our pleasure. And thank you so much for your insight into everything that is happening at COP28. Now it's time for a break. But after the break, we're bringing an exceptional musician into the studio who you are not going to want to miss. So stay with us. <laughs> 